Welcome to our Monday's broadcast. This is Dr. John Lukiams. I'm coming to you wherever you are live and I'm very, very excited. I got a message in my heart burning and I know when you receive that message in your heart, not in your mind, but in your heart, you're going to see the victory you have never seen. You have never tasted because that has happened to me. And I know this is going to be exciting. So I'm going to give you a minute. Tell your friends. Invite your friends. Text to your friends. And invite them. I can see some people already logging in. People like Karunji and, and, and the rest. Please tell somebody. Because we're going to have fun. I really believe being a Christian is having fun. It's having life abundance. So today, I really want to talk to you about sowing, sowing like a sower in the word of God into your heart. Nobody can do this for you. You got to do it yourself. You got to sow the word of God in your life. Because the moment you sow the word of God in your life, victory is guaranteed. Victory is yours. You'll never, never talk a, like, well, God has failed me. No, 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 no. God will never, never fail you. Many times we people, we fail God. And then we turn around and say, God has failed me. God has brought cancer to me. God has brought sickness to me. Please. God is for you. God wants you well. God wants you healthy. Please get this message. If your earthly father here on earth does not want to see you miserable, your earthly father does not want to see you suffering, why would you think in your mind that God is planning or is putting sickness on you? Come on, guys. Let's be realistic about this. God loves you. To the level he died on the cross. This last Easter, which was basically yesterday, that was Sunday resurrection. He went through all that for you. He took your sins away for you. Your sicknesses for you. Your diseases for you. We were under curse. He took that curse away for you. He took your poverty and gave you his riches for you. Come on, guys. We need to be knowledgeable in the word of God. There is too much suffering around. And the main reason this has nothing to do with God. Some of us, we have thought or come to the level of reading the Bible like the Bible is a weird, weird book. No, 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 no. The Bible is not a weird book. We are weird most times because we don't take an extra time to study, to learn, to be trained in the word of God. You know, what I'm about to share with you, God showed this to me about uh, when I was a teenager back in Uganda. And so it came so strong that when 
I get the revelation of God's word, I'm going to have a brighter future. I really thought about that. I meditated about that. I knew my background. God was like saying, this has nothing to do with my background. Look at me. Look at me. Look at me. That's the way God was talking to me. And you know what? I took God at his word. And guess what? I have never, never looked be behind. Have I had problems? Yes. But guess what? When I'm going through problems, especially today, I have an attitude that this is going to be for a short time. This is going to be temporal. This is going to be for a short while. And guess what? That is what the Bible says. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 17. Please get that scripture. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 17. Because some of you go through a test, a challenge, a failure, a mistake. You fall down, all of a sudden you cry. In, in Uganda we say, Oh, mama, food day, food day. Come on, don't go there. Oh, food day, she. What have you? you? You are still kicking. You are still breathing. Yeah, you are still breathing. You're not dead. We like to confess in food day. I'm dead. I'm a, I'm a dead man. No, you are not a dead man. You got Christ in you. You're not a dead woman. You got Christ in you. Why would you speak those poisonous words? Look at Proverbs 18 and verse 21. He says, For as a man speaketh, so is he. Think about it. Think about it. I'm talking to you, my audience here in Cambridge, which I'm excited and welcome, by the way. And I got my Facebook audience here too. So I got about three cameras in this studio here. And I, am, I thank God for the technology. There are people who are watching me overseas in different countries where even I've never been there. But technology is amazing. People are hearing the gospel through the high tech. And that's why I'm telling you here that the word of God when you put it in your heart, it doesn't matter what race you are. It doesn't matter the color of your skin. It doesn't matter your height. It doesn't matter your education. Yeah. I have interviewed people here in the studio who are multimillionaires, even from Uganda, like a Jeff. When you believe, when you believe, you will experience victory. You will experience success. That is why the Bible says in John chapter 10 and verse 10, He came that we might have life, that we might have it more abundantly. Listen to me. In Romans chapter 10 and verse 17, the Bible says, Faith cometh, cometh, comes to you, comes to you by hearing. That is why I want to talk today about the, you, you sowing the word of God in your heart. Because what your heart is a soil. It's like any other Seed, putting it in the soil. But I'm talking about here, the word of God is a seed. Actually, in the original word, it's talking about the sperm. By now, you should know what a sperm is if you're old enough. When a sperm is put in a woman and it goes and meets the egg, there is going to be a conception you can pray all you want. God, my sperm is going to meet the egg. Can you stop it? No, God is not going to stop it. Because that's the principle. 
you sow, you sow. You go and harvest. Sleep with a woman, no protection. She's going to conceive. Hello? We are talking about the sow sowing the seed. If you want to follow this, what I'm talking about, the parable, the parable of sowing the seed in the ground. It's found in Mark chapter 4. I love that chapter. I really, really love that chapter. Because where I was born in Uganda, in the village, most of us, we went to sowing, putting the seed. Everything really was about the seed. I grew up seeing this. Nobody trained me, but I saw my mom, my dad put the seed in the ground. I could see the plants coming out. So the same thing with you. It's a powerful ideology. It has, it's more, well, even the words, the words, I am speaking to you right now. I am sowing a seed in your life. And that seed, I'm not going to let anything disappoint me. And it's not going to happen. Because God says when you sow a seed, you will harvest. When you plant a seed, you will harvest. That's what I'm talking about. Please get this. When I came to America, I just wanted to go learn more about the Bible. And I found one of the best Bible schools in Seattle. I was there for four years. I graduated with a degree. And the man, it was very, very good. But I wanted to know more. So I went to another uh, seminar in Florida. The school period for two years, I got uh, my master's in education. So the point I'm saying here, I just wanted to study, to study the word of God. And I'm so glad I made the right decision. That's what Paul told Timothy, the younger pastor. He said, study, study to show the word of God rightly dividing. Because if you don't study, you're going to be confused. We've got a lot, of, a lot of teachers. They even don't know what they're talking about. Yeah, they don't know what they are talking about. I'm serious. They don't know. Some, I'll give you an example. Some teachers, and I used to be like them at one time. Some teachers, they will tell you the only way somebody can be healed, you go to pray for them. I believe in praying. But there is something even much better than praying for somebody to be healed in Matthew chapter one, chapter 10 and verse 1 and verse 8. I get excited about this. God has given us authority. Jesus gave us authority. Already we have the authority. It doesn't make point to go and ask him to give us the authority when he said, I already gave you the authority. Now go. Now go. Now go. Man, that's good. I know that's radical. <laughs> that's radical, man. Just go. Don't, 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 don't just go around. Lord, oh, oh, oh. bless me. We do all this jiving, you know. Just go heal the sick. I used to live in Seattle, Washington. There was a man, man. <laughs> he had his followers. Say, was it, uh, what was his name? Jay Lake. He would Send his followers. He said, go heal the sick. Don't come back here until they are healed. <laughs> That's good. I like radical. That's what he told us. He did not command us. Again, please read. I'm going to give you the scripture reference. Matthew chapter 10, verse 1 and verse 8. said, go heal the sick. I know some of you think maybe Jesus was confused. No, 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 no. He was not confused. When he said he commands you go, he means go. And he knows when he tells you, go pray. Sometimes we don't know the, the difference. When a police officer, especially in the United States, they have badges. 
They identify themselves. It doesn't matter how much they weigh. It doesn't matter the gender, whether it is a woman or it is the man. It doesn't matter whether they the nationality. It doesn't matter. They got a badge. They represent the, they represent the government of the United States. It doesn't matter how big the truck facing them. All they need is they put up their hand like this. Stop. What are they? What type of power do you have to stop against this trailer? Well, you got the authority. You got the power. It is the same thing. Jesus gave you the power. Jesus gave you the authority and the power. Where the devil has the power? No, 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 no. The only power the devil has is what you give him by opening your big mouth. You tell him, devil, you are so strong. Devil, you are on my case. Devil, when are you going to leave me? Devil, when uh, are you going to stop making me poor? Come on. Come on. Talk the word of God. Talk the word of faith. Where do you find the faith? In the word of God. I'm going to say a radical statement. Everything. Everything. God gives. It is in his word. Just read his word. Study his word. Everything is in the word of God. You want prosperity? Read the Bible. Joshua chapter 1 and verse 8. You want victory? Read the Bible. We are more than conquerors. You want healing in your life? Read the Bible. 1 Peter 2.24 Everything is in the Bible. So everything God does, that's a good line, everything, and I mean everything, it's in the Bible. Man, think about this. Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 3. Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 3. God has blessed us. Past tense. He's not going to bless us tomorrow. He blessed us 2,000 years ago. Yeah. I'm preaching loud God today. Yeah. I'm really, ooh, this is good. You need to get this in your heart that you are a blessed man. Yeah. You need to know this, man. It's exciting because once you know the truth, the truth will set you free. Excuse me. And it's very good. Very, very good. But you need to know the truth. And why do we find the truth? In the Bible, plant the seed in your heart. Your heart is a powerful soil. Invest the time. It takes time. Yeah. It takes time to read the word of God. Discipline yourself. And they begin to say, you know what? I'm just going to sow the seed in my heart. Man, this is good. Invest your time. My background is business. I have invested money in real estate. I bought houses for rental. It's investment. You have to invest. And in turn, I would get back. I would harvest. Please, I'm giving you these examples so that you can get the understanding. And once you get these kinds of understanding, your life will not be the same. You will harvest because that seed inside your heart your heart is a fertile soil. Once you put the seed in your heart, it's going to germinate. That's a good word. Germinate. The word is going to grow. But you need to be rooted. That's another good word. You need to be grounded. That's another good word. <laughs> uh, yeah, I like words. Because words are powerful. You can 
bring life in your life by speaking the words. Life and the death be in the power of the tongue. You speak the word. The Bible says also that the word of God, it is. When you speak it, you are prophesying. Wow. When I speak the word of God, when I quote a scripture, when I say it is written, I'm prophesying. You know, sometimes we speak it too much. If you don't know what you're talking up, just zip it. You're better off because you don't know. You might say something stupid that is going to hurt you. I can't make it. I'm a very poor person. Why would you talk like that when God says he has blessed you? When God blesses you, nobody can curse you. Ooh, that's good. Seriously, if anybody tries to curse you, God has a way to make your enemy come and even work for you. <laughs> That's good. Seriously. Because God, when he blesses you, and let me tell you when God blesses you, he blesses you big. Because when God blesses you, everybody's going to know you're a blessed man. And sooner or later, whatever you put your hands on, it prospers. P, P, P. The seed of greatness is in you. Come on. Please get this. This is what happened exactly to David. David was a shepherd. Those days to be a shepherd... You'd be despised. You'd be like a janitor. You clean the toilets. It's, it's, it's kind of really a low type of career, shepherd. Shepherd, yeah. You don't want even to say, my, my son is a shepherd, you know. You don't look good. Those days. But let me tell you. God saw in this shepherd boy who used to be on the field and they said, you're going to be the king of Israel. God blessed David. God anointed David. Here's something you need to learn too. When God blesses you, you know, I've seen things, man, God moves so slow in my life. I want something now, and God is so slow. To me, to my understanding, to him is not slow, because to him it days like a thousand years. It's not. It's no problem. But let me tell you, when God moves in your life, slowly, surely. Guess what? It's gonna come in your way. You're gonna harvest what you've been waiting for. Been waiting for a good woman. Yeah, she comes. And then you'll say, I'm glad you waited. Ha, 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 ha. Yeah, some of you, you don't want to wait. I just want a woman. Now the hormones are kicking in my life. You know, some of you follow hormones. Come on, guys. Follow the Holy Ghost. <laughs> That's a good one. Yeah. Don't follow your hormones. Yeah, I know we got hormones in our lives. All of us. Man, those hormones, they can drive you. <laughs> they can really drive you. And they say, okay, I'm coming. I'm going. You know, it's amazing how many people, how many miles people drive to go and get, have a sexual relationship. They will drive 800 miles. They will even fly. You know, because the hormones are driving them. You better listen to the Holy Spirit, buddy. Because you're going to mess up. Listen to the Holy Spirit. Let the Holy Spirit drive your life. Because when the Holy Spirit is driving, there are no accidents. All is well. What am I saying? I'm saying listen to the word of God. Because once you listen to the word of God, it's going to turn your life around. I hear a lot of Christians making real 
stupid mis uh, statements. You know, like a God failed me. Why would you say God failed you? God does not love me. Why would you say that God does not love you after sending his only son to die for you? Come on, get the revelation. Get excited that God has got a good plan for you. Man, this is a good message. Because you need to read the Bible. You need to read the word. And once you read the word, it will turn your life around. Because it is the most exciting thing to know this kind of truth. Excuse me, guys. Because this is really very, very, very good. Yeah. When you know the truth will set you free, you will never say God has failed me. Now, God, God, God cannot fail. You fail. And be smart and say, I fail. I'm sorry. Like a David, he failed. He's, he committed adultery with Bathsheba. And uh, David said, where can I go? I made a mistake. I committed an adultery. He changed his mind. I don't want to continue doing this. And God loved him for that. So don't say, God failed. No, no, no. God does not fail. God will never fail you. That's why he said when he, Jesus comes back, will he find you faithful? Because God is faithful. He's so faithful. Even when you goof up, when you do even stupid things, he still loves you. Man, that's good. God is faithful. Think of make a covenant, a contract, an agreement with the other party is faithful. First of all, you should never, never be in a contract. You should never, never, never get married to somebody who is not godly. Oh, I gotta say that. Never, never, never get married if you are single to somebody who is unyoked together. Where do I read that? In the Bible. 2 Corinthians 6 and verse 14. I teach every Wednesday about relationships. And that is a common question. How about I got this cute guy? He's six feet. He's dark. He's brown. I've dreamt to marry a man like him. And he's got money. He's got education. What do you think, Pastor John? I'm going to say, no! No! No, because he's not godly, because he's not a believer. No, because he's not a Christian. If you marry him, sooner or later you're going to be miserable because he's going to find some other four or five girls. And even, even if he bought you the house, he will not even come to sleep in that house because he will be sleeping in another house. So you'll be crying all night. You don't have anybody to sleep with. Well, I thought he said he loved me. Well, because he's not a Christian, he's going to tell lies to you guys. Get it? Second Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 14. Man, this guy, he talks so sweet. He's a gentleman. In a matter of fact, I think he's better than a Christian. He's better than most of these Christians. Yeah, but he's not a believer. Well, when I marry him, I'm going to change him. I'm going to make sure he becomes a believer. Really? Of course he's going to become a believer because he loves you. He wants to sleep with you. He can become a believer anytime you want him to be a believer. You probably say, do you want to be a Before we get married, do you want to be a believer? He's going to say, of course, of course, of course. Yes, why not? I love you. I'll do anything for you. Hello? Yeah, this is good. I hope somebody's listening to me. 
Because I've seen a people with a lot of tears because they made mistakes. They are not, not reading the word of God. If you read the word of God, mistakes will be eliminated. They will not be part of your life. You will be a smart woman, a wise woman. You will be able to discern. You will go with a guy who believes in God. A guy who has God in his heart. A guy who believes in God. A guy who trusts in God. Yes, he may not be wealthy and he may not have a lot of money, but you can build it together. You help him. Say, honey, we're going to make it. He believes in God. Before you know, money will be coming. I know this for a fact. People like Brother Andrew, man, this man, he couldn't even afford to buy a Bible. His wife became be pregnant. They didn't have food. But one thing he did, he started reading the Bible. Every day, every day, as many as 10 hours a day. Whoa, whoa. Everything changed. Now he has built millions, cash paid, over $100 million. And he's still building more buildings. Because, because he's been reading the Bible. When you read the Bible and put the word of God in your heart, you are sowing the seed. And once you sow the seed in your life, prosperity is going to come chasing you. Man is going to come chasing you. That's what the Bible says in Matthew 6 verse 33. You put God first. God is number one. Not your wife. Not your family. Not your money. Not your job. Not your education. But God. Number one. All these things are going to come in your way. I'm serious. Now I've been given clothes. I've been given cars. I've been given Houses where to stay. You want a house? Yeah. There is one here. You want to come and live there? Yeah. <laughs> I remember when I came from Uganda. And uh, they leased the house for me. They didn't even tell me they were going to lease a house for you. We brothers, we decided, Brother John, we're going to lease a house for you. For 12 months, it's already paid. All you need is just to move in. <laughs> Man, that's good. Whatever you think. You're not going to come to America and just get a house. Somebody give it to you. Well, God said, if you leave the houses, God will not forget that. He will make sure you get more houses. <laughs> Again, that's what the Bible says, ladies and gentlemen. It's time to believe the word of God. It's time to trust in God. It's time. You want to receive. I don't know what you need. But everything you need is through God's word. I'm telling you these days that if there is a problem, I'll go study, dig in the scripture, and find the scripture along those lines and stand on that scripture. Proclaim that scripture. Decree that scripture. Speak that scripture. And then thank God. It's done. Guess what? Always I get what the word of God says. I get what I believe. It works for me. It has worked for a lot of my friends. I like to post some of these testimonies on my website. CFMFAN.org I repeat. CFM. F A N dot O R G. They are even, I put their names there. I put where they are, cities that they are coming from, or what part of the world. Because these people, they are saying, they, what you are saying, it is true. And I wouldn't say it if I don't think it is true. The word of God is truth, the word of God is real. The word of God is power. The word of God is a hammer. 
It will come up in a problem. It will break in a problem into pieces. The word of God is a two-edged sword. It will cut on this side. It will cut on the other side. Either way, it's going to cut. Mm. Man. I'm preaching myself happy. I'm going to have the rest of today very happy. Happy. I don't need to drink a bottle of alcohol so I can be happy. No. The word of God makes me happy. Man. You need to get this revelation, the word of God. Even when Jesus came here on earth, you know what he said? He said, it is written. He didn't have time to argue with the devil. Don't spend time arguing with the devil. Don't, please, you don't have time. Devil, what's your name? Where are you coming from? Devil, what do you want? Why are you here? You're wasting time with the devil. Tell him to get out of your face in the name of Jesus. If you don't tell him, he's going to entertain himself before your eyes, before your face. Then you're going to say, the devil is a liar. He kept lying, lying, lying. He lied to me in the morning. The devil came and lied to me in the afternoon. The devil even tonight is lying to me. Well, what is he supposed to do? The devil is a liar, guys. You should know that. He's the father of lies. He's going to lie to you. And he will use sometimes these boyfriends. Some of you have these goofy boyfriends. He's going to say, I really love you. He's saying, I just lost you. I just want to sleep with you. And he will say nothing. He's lying, lying, lying. I can't even eat a food because, man, when I think of you. No, this guy is lying. As soon as he says that, he's eating food. Before he said that, he was eating food. Come on. Get in the spirit so you can know the truth. You need it. To confront the devil with the word of God. God said. I like that. God said. And the devil will never, never tamper with what the word of God said. What am I saying? I'm saying the word of God, it is the key. You want to get into your house? You better have the right key. I'll tell you, this is, this is true, really. Uh, I got a, a bunch of keys on my ring. And here, it can be cold in Boston. So one time, I wanted to open the door. It's cold. It's freezing, you know. But then I have a key, so I have to look. I try, and it was really, and I was freezing. I couldn't get in the house. I have the keys. But I didn't have the right key to get it right. I went open the door. Eventually, I found it. I got inside of the house. My hands were freezing, you know. Now I've wisened up. I'm smart enough. I make sure that the key to the house is very close to the key of my car because the key of my car is bigger than the rest of the keys. So right now, I need to find that big key which is of my car, and the next key will be the one to my house. Boom, open and go inside. And then turn on the light and walk in the living room, go to the kitchen, living room, sitting room, just have a good time, you know? Instead of me freezing outside. What am I saying? I'm saying the Bible is the key. The Bible is the key. Not two, not three, but this is the key to real success. The Bible is the key to the victory. And I thank God a lot of people have found that out because the Bible is the number one selling book in the whole world. Because everybody who reads the, the Bible, who takes the time to read the Bible, they are never disappointed. In a matter of fact, the British, who migrated to the United States, they came to the United States so that they could find freedom. 
to read the Bible, to worship God. This is powerful, ladies and gentlemen. Well, we are left with about six minutes. And I want to conclude here telling you, please, invest in the word of God. It's going to be the best investment in your life. You want your children to be happy. Invest in your heart so they can bless them with the word of God. People will tell you, do this. People, you'll see TV commercials, do this. Do this. Let me tell you, any of those things they tell you, nothing is so good like the word of God. And when you have the word of God in you, you got it all, buddy. Yeah, you have everything you can imagine. You will walk in victory. You will walk in health. You will be well. You will be happy. You can smile. Because the Bible says in Matthew 12, what fills the heart, the mouth speaketh. You speak the word out of your heart. I'm not talking, because most of us, we get stuff from our heads, our brain, our mind. And the Bible warns us in James, starting with verse 6, when you are double-minded, your mind has got stuff in your head. You, then there is the, also stuff in your heart. You mix those together. The negative is going to overcome the positive. You should know that by now. And that's why I'm putting an emphasis. Focus on the word of God. Meditate on the word of God. Ponder on the word of God. Think about the word of God. Because when you think about the word of God, your heart will be filled with the, the word of God. Ladies, look for a man full of the word of God in his heart. Yeah. The heart is the center of the man. That is where his life revolves around. Check that man. Check that woman. What is in the heart? Sometimes people, they have filled their hearts with the word F. He can, he can only speak two sentences. The next word is F you. F you. F you. I'm filled with the word of God. Anytime you call me on the phone, one or another, I'll quote a scripture to you. One way or another, I'll tell you about my God. One way or another, I'll tell you what God is doing in my life. One way or another, I'll tell you how good God is. That's why Paul said, don't be ashamed of the gospel. Because it is the power of God. People today, man, they are looking for redemption. They are looking for deliverance. Where do you find deliverance? In the word of God. Where do you find redemption? In the word of God. Where do you find salvation? In the word of God. You've got to invest. You've got to put in the time. Stop and think. How many hours a day do you put in to, to get the almighty God, the almighty dollar? You are working, working, 8 hours, 12 hours, sometimes 16 hours. You want to get the dollar. And many times you get it, you are so tired. You can't even enjoy it. But I'll tell you this. If you dare spend time putting the word of God in your heart, you will enjoy it. Because it comes with peace. 
It comes with joy. And at the moment, the moment you invest, God will respect you. God is a reward to them that seek him diligently. You will harvest. You will be very, very happy. Again, I want to say thank you very much for uh, tuning in today. I'm so glad I was able to share the word of God. This video is going to be available. Send it to somebody and say, listen to this guy, man. Just listen to this guy. He's talking about God. He's talking about the word of God. This, this is going to change your life. I thought, just, just listen to the word. That would be the best gift you can give to somebody. That was the best gift given to me. And I'm, free, I'm feasting on this. Again, I want to say thank you very much for listening to me today. My audience here, Cambridge, thank you very much for tuning in today. And uh, I'm really very uh, glad. Every Monday, I come here to broadcast to you from 3 p.m. East Standard Time to 4 p.m. I know this is going to turn your life around. Trust God. Let him be number one in your life. And you will never regret. Thank you very much for listening in today. Visit our website, cfmfan.org. God bless you. Thank you so much for listening to me. I love you all. Good day. Glorious day. Bye-bye now.